Hi, I'm Nicole and today I'm going to show you how you can make drums with your modular. Basically there are three ways to do it. You can use a sampler or a drum module or you can patch from scratch by using oscillators, VCAs and envelopes. So let's check out what the samplers can do. You can upload the samples on your SD card, then select the sample and then play it by sending triggers into the trigger input of your sampler. I'm using Grandpa from Bustle Instruments. It has this cool feature that it lets you browse samples by using CVs. So if you send a CV sequence from a CV sequencer, like a popcorn, and some triggers, you can play a whole drum kit. The second way to do it is to use dedicated drum modules. They just need a trigger and then you can set the parameters and here you go, you got the drums. So samplers and drum modules are easy. You just feed them with triggers and the drums come out. This video is over. This video focuses on how to make drums from scratch. Please know that I'm not showing you how it should be done, but the ways that work for me and also things that I learned. I'm going to use Bubble Sound VCOB as a sound source. Drum sounds are mostly percussive sounds. And what makes them percussive is a short attack. But short attack doesn't necessarily mean zero attack. So AR, attack release, and ASR, attack sustain release envelopes are great for detailed percussive volume curves. Skiz has two envelopes and can be configured into ASR envelope by inverting one release envelope and mixing it to the other in a multiple. For the ASR mode, you have to set the first envelope's jumper to release and the second to decay. I will use this ASR envelope to modulate the volume of my drum sound with Ski's built-in VCA. I like to set up a second envelope to modulate pitch. I will use a simple release envelope for that. The reason why I'm using two different envelopes for volume and pitch is that I want my pitch envelope to be shorter. It's common to use just one envelope for pitch and volume, but it offers you less flexibility. The patch I did so far can be considered as the first layer of my drum sound, or as I like to call it, the body. The second layer is going to be the noise layer. It's just a noise source going through the VCA, modulated by an envelope. To make it more advanced, I'm going to patch it through the high pass filter, and I'm going to use the same kind of ASR envelope as I did in the body layer. And that's how layers of traditional drum synthesis look like. Sort of. You can add any patch as a layer. I'm going to use a sample layer now. So let's see what those layers can do. As you can see, the patch can do different drum and percussive sounds by different settings. You can automate those settings by sequencer and use one patch for whole beat. Be aware, this patch is monophonic. That means it can only output one drum sound at a time, so the decays of the drum sounds cannot overlap. That gives some artifacts, but also a certain charm to it. Finally, I'm going to show you my favorite thing with drums, and that is to distort them. I put a timbre wave shaper on the master output of my drum patch that I will use as a distortion, but also a wave folder. Another thing that is worth experimenting with is a trigger delay like a little nerd to slightly offset the layers like this. There are many changes that you can make to this patch. One is to use an oscillator with a reset input that will make the body layer more consistent by resetting the waveform on each trigger. 
An honorable mention of ways to get percussive sounds is a pinked filter. Thanks for watching and be prepared. Next time we will focus on sequencing.